Interesting, but you know what? I actually really like the move. This team is talented. Where I'm not saying you don't need him, but when you can rest him and get other guys comfortable down the stretch, you know you can go deeper into those rotations. But this is a, this is a smart move by Brian Lynch. Get some guys some experience. You know, make sure it, it even makes the game just a little bit more competitive because Matt is a next level player. You you send him out. It becomes a little more even here for, for Wildwood Catholic. We'll see what happens, but it will give somebody a chance to shine and let them know, hey, come the deeper rounds. I'm available. I can make an impact. Coach, put me in. The winner of this one will take on Holy Cross Prep or Calvary Christian from Old Bridge, the winner of that one. And that game will be taking place on Thursday. So they still got to get through this one. Matt Hodge will not be in the starting five, surprisingly. But starting five first for the visiting Wildwood Catholic Crusaders. It's going to be number five, Charlie Dunner, the senior. And that'll be number zero, Alex Daniel, the sophomore. It'll be Pat Bean, the guard as well. And on the middle at number 13, Tayshawn Jackson. Jaden Hodge. Avery Lynch, Giochino Panzini in the starting five, as well as number 21, Avery Lynch, and tip off underway, and St. Rose will lose it, and right off the gate, Nashir Ruiz attacking against an offensive foul. Tyler Cameron will be in the starting lineup for St. Rose as well. Don't forget hey. Brian Ebling in there. Lynch. Down to Jaden Hodge, back down, cross court pass, quick, Ebling, corner three, air mailed inside, and a good box out by Ruiz, both misses to start off. And right next to us, we got the ever loud student section. They're, track, they're decked out in camo tonight, knowing that it's battle time, win or go home situation, and the student section, this entire gym packed out, showing off full force for both squads. Bean gets it back to Daniel. Trying to go left and a kick out in the corner with Jackson. And a foul on the baseline. Going to go against Jaden Hodge. And Tayshawn Jackson with a good attack. First team foul for St. Rose first on Hodge. I think that's going to be the goal tonight for Wildwood Catholic. It's just getting Jaden Hodge into foul trouble. Well, it's going to be an interesting situation. How about that pass? And a good defense on the step up from Panzini. I was going to say, Hodge, you know, Steele's leader of this team. They're probably their best perimeter defender. Panzini going to give him a run for the money in that category. Lynch from sure. the elbow. Knocks it down. Oh, man. Getting after it. And the young Lynch putting the first two points on the board. Avery Lynch, a player that Coach Lynch will say is extremely skilled, great footwork. And he's actually Brian Lynch's nephew. And getting some quality minutes on this team and making a basket to start this one off in the starting five. Well, you know, we just saw his niece put in work. Of course, Jada Lynch in the last game. Let's see what the nephew has in this one for us. Jackson, guarded by Ebling. Back up top here with Bean. And now, right now, Wildwood just taking a really slow approach. I think that's what you gotta do. Draw out these long possessions. Grind them out. And force St. Rose to only compete here with a few possessions of a travel here from Daniel in the lane and a turnover. Yeah, the big fella was trying to post up, trying to get, <laughs> my bad, the student section absolutely electric right now. 
was trying to go to that outlet pass Ooh, Hodge, and just get caught there with there from Ruiz. Extra step. And now kicked inside as almost stolen away. Cameron able to reset. Panzini backing down Daniel. In Hodge inside. Could have been a foul in there. Thought it definitely was going to be a foul on Ruiz. Rosanella. And now Dunner. Kick out. Bean will move it over. And it's now going to be Wildwood to draw out this possession. Dunner kick out. Daniel going with the left hand dribble. Inside contact. Knocks it down. We're tied at two. It's a nice job of attacking the paint. The sophomore carving out a little room to work with. And we're all tied up. Hodge kicks out. Panzini straight away three. Bang! Gio Panzini. Makes the most of it. Loves playing defense. He had a block party last time we saw him. Six blocks in that game against the number one uh, team in the country. My apologies. That same weekend, that first game, he still had a couple of blocks. And foul against Malvern. as Bean tried to go baseline. And they're going to get this one inside against Tyler Cameron, the sophomore. And now two shots at the line for... Pat Bean, the senior guard. They're going to have to rely on these guys a lot. A lot of the experience on the floor tonight. We got Dunner, Bean, Keyshawn Russell, the senior as well. Anthony Edwardi coming off the bench. They're going to need all the experience they can get in this type of game, in this type of environment as Bean knocks down both. Hodge gets it across with Panzini. Cameron gets a screen from Panzini, attacking the rim, kick out, Ebling, corner three, off the mark, and a defensive rebound inside by Russell on a foul by Ebling in transition, and already Ebling with a foul, Cameron with a foul, and Jaden Hodge with a foul, three team fouls on St. Rose already. Yeah, no, you, you gotta find a way to just calm it down a little bit, especially with the rule change, as uh, five fouls, and the opposing team's gonna be at the line as they changed it this year. Something to keep your eye on, and still awaiting to see if the big fella, Matt Hodge, will make an appearance. Dunner gets it over with Jackson. Now back up top, Daniel, three, off the mark, and Jaden Hodge a rebound. Hodge, quickly transition, Panzini. Ebling attacking inside. No good on the layup, and rebounded inside by Ruiz. Ebling, a high energy player. Just got to put a little more juice on that. And that's going to be off Avery Lynch. Uh, but Ebling got to do just a, a little more energy on that uh, on those drives in the shots. Just left it a couple short, uh, a little short these past couple of times. See this angle right now. Our man Ethan up at the crow's nest here at St. Rose. Dunner. Under four minutes ago in the first quarter. 5-4 St. Rose. Wildwood doing a good job of just extending these possessions. Bean. Back up top. And now it's with Jackson on the wing. Daniel. Gonna go inside with some contact and a kick back out. Dunner a three. No good. And Panzini with a tough rebound. How about Jenna Hodge showing off the paint defense down low? The big fella, no problem as he forces the pass out. Lynch a mid range. Airballed it and rebounded by Dunner. And Wildwood doing a great job on the rebounds right now. Purple Rose is just leaving a couple of shots short as they're looking to get the rhythm, but Panzini with the block. And Panzini with a big play inside the length that Coach Lynch always talks about, and Panzini defends, knocks down open shots, great size and athleticism, showcasing it there. As junior Evan Romano checks into the game. Still no Matt Hodge with his warm-up shirt still on. Tyler Cameron, the sophomore, gonna take a seat on the bench. As Looks like a tip out of bounds on the inbound there from Dunner. 3.12 to go in this first quarter. I wonder if we'll see Matt Hodge in the first half at all, to be honest with you. Jackson. And a steal here for Avery Lynch. Two on two. Panzini. Oh! <laughs> oh, my Lord. Get up there, young fella. Giochini Panzini slamming it. Down! He did not have to do that. He chose to do that. And the crowd loves it. And then who's your daddy chance starting here at the zoo? Three. Knocked down there in the corner. 
It's Pat Bean with the answer, and we're tied at seven. And they needed that one for sure. Not only tying it up, but getting the uh, crowd in check a little bit here. Nice move from Romano. Hop Eblick. step inside, and Abel to hit it high off the glass. Brian Eblick, I mean, he's been coming into his own for sure. Coach Lynch absolutely raves about him. The defense, just the willingness to dive after everything. Always a high energy player for them. That time, mm. bounces his way to a layup. Coach Lynch calls him a pit bull. I mean, that's what he does. He is. With some contact inside and able to get one high off the glass. Able to get the lead right back for the Purple Roses. And some substitutions in here as Ryan McGrath, the junior, getting some minutes here for Wildwood Catholic. Bean, driving baseline, bounce pass in the corner. Good fake pass, a three flies, too short from McGrath, and that one out of bounds, last touch by Bean. That's upsetting because that would have been a heck of a alley-oop link up down low, but nonetheless. And going back to Ebling, you know, you know I got that Pitbull tier, and uh, I'm giving him that certification for sure, the way he gets after it. Uh, Pitbull Terrier for me. Maybe we'll rise to a, to a uh, one of those K Corsos one day. Panzini nearly stripped there. Daniel with good defense inside. Kick out, corner three, knocked down. Evan Romano from the corner. Nice job by Romano. Just picking his moment, waiting for it. Perfect rhythm, great release point, and nailing that one as they increase the lead here. Now it's time for Wildwood to draw up possession here. Ruiz takes out the corner. McGrath now back up top with Dunner. Almost stolen, Dunner gets it back. Bean lets a three fly, and how about that answer from the Crusaders? Right in Ebling's face, that is a hard shot. Makes you look easy. Talk about an apex release point. Hodge, baseline drive, great double clutch layup. A little peanut butter with the jelly on that one. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter. Rose with a four point lead. And we always talk about Matt Hodge, but how about Jaden Hodge? I mean, multiple D1 offers, including Maryland. Sure, Villanova's gonna be knocking on the door too, but he's really coming to his own this season. Second leading scorer on this team. Dunner inside, Bean with some contact. Layup no good, but I thought maybe a foul should have been called there. No Cut. whistle. And again, in transition, and he's grabbed inside by Bean, stopping him right in his tracks, and that's the first team foul of the quarter for Wildwood Catholic, and that's their first foul with 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. They went the whole game without a foul called in the first seven and a half minutes. Yep. And going back, Jaden Hodge, 340 plus points coming into this game on the season. What it, It's been quality. Over 140 rebounds. Romano a three, knocks it down. Quick two-man game there for St. Rose to extend the lead up to seven. Just looking at this depth right now. Dunner inside, layup. Strong finish there from the senior. Nice job by Dunner. You gotta be willing to get after, that's for sure. No intimidation factor. Oh, that's and gonna be all offensive. Offensive foul against Romano. Throwing Pin the chicken wing back and catching someone in the face. And I think they're gonna get that one on uh, number four. I think that one is Anthony Edwardi. Able to sell that one. Dunner at the horn, off the right rim, no good. And Wildwood Catholic at the end of one, trailing by only five, 17 to 12. That was a really well executed first quarter by the Crusaders. No, absolutely, and you know, uh, you, you gotta give it to them hanging in there. A uh, five point difference now, and especially with Manny Weaver taking that elbow to the face, that could have uh, been leading to <laughs> more points but nonetheless I mean to be at the end of that quarter with only a five point difference you got to give it to them they came out they competed the question is is the x factor of Matt Hodge going to make an appearance in this game uh, honestly it reminds me I used to play against Mountain Lakes they had two different units uh, both for their offense and defense so you hang in with them for the third quarter and then a brand new offense and a brand new defense comes in that's the capability that Matt Hodge has if he checks into this one. However, 
you got to give it to the, the units that are out there right now, especially I'm looking at Jaden Hodge leading the way, doing the little things for the team, making some nice shots, nice cuts, coming down with the boards. Gio Panzini making it rain. There's still a lot of problems uh, to deal with, even without Matt on the court. Absolutely, and right now Hodge been held relatively in check only with four points in that first quarter, and they're trying to really get him the ball in, in certain situations. And I think it's been on these Wildwood Catholic defenders who have done a great job just isolating him and not really taking him inside the, the rhythm of the offense. Uh, for sure, you know, you got to zone in on the next player. Whatever the game plan was uh, for Matt, that he's out right now. You got to focus right in on Jaden. And, of course, got to keep Panzini in mind. But that's where the target and all the attention needs to be right now. Make someone else beat you. Jaden Hodge now taking this ball up. And now Cameron in the corner. As that one's a hold going to be called against Kylie Ruiz. And after one foul in the first seven and a half minutes of quarter number one, a foul in the first 13 seconds of quarter number two for the Crusaders. Hodge will inbound on the baseline. Trying to find something. Kick out of the corner. Romano with three. That one no good. And the rebound coming up and in. The ball. They go out of bounds. And they'll stay with St. Rose. And you got to rebound it if you're Wildwood Catholic. Can't be giving them too many opportunities at this end of the floor. Back up top, Panzini. Moving it over. Looked like it was with Roman for a second and then a whistle underneath. And I think there was an issue at the scores table. Got that all fixed up. Now Jaden Hodge gets the inbound back in. Cameron going to work. Kick out. Romano inside. Now Roman trying to pass inside to Hodge. And another great defensive possession for the Crusaders. How about Charlie Dunner on that one? Just shadowing Hodge, getting a hand in there at the last second and disrupting the pass. And right now it's only a five-point St. Rose lead. And Dunner and the Crusaders with the ball. Giving it off here. With Eduardi for a second. And now back up top, Bean trying to drive inside. Stolen away by Romano. A high, fast break in. It's going to be Jaden Hodge off the feed from Romano. It's the capability of just creating turnovers, and it's an open runway. And there you see Hodge finishing with the layup. Surprised he didn't put a little extra on it. Edwardi trying to drive inside, two steps. Oh, filet off the glass. Edwardi with an answer. That was one heck of a finish for sure. Hodge kicks up, Panzini pump fake, trying to drive inside, kick out. Hodge a three. No good. And rebounded by Jackson. Dunner with 6.25 to go in the first half. Trying to spin, tries to get around. Two double team coming. And a good help defense there from Romano. You got to give it there. That was just way too much uh, length to deal with. Romano a triple. Butter. It's an eight point Purple Roses lead. And Romano, just a guy that creates a spark everywhere that he goes. He's got length on the defensive side. It's really annoying to deal with for sure but it also creates good shots. Jackson, that one, rims out. And now St. Rose trying to keep this run going. Romano, over to Panzini, wing three. Too strong, and another big rebound on the defensive end. This one for Kaili Ruiz. And now it'll be Dunner to take this one up. Romano face garden. And that one tipped out of bounds, Roman. Getting a hand on that one. So now Ebling going to check in. Jaden Hodge going to check out. Multiple subs here for the Crusaders. Matt Hodge standing up with Coach Lynch. Probably just talking some things over. But still does not look like he's going to make an appearance. I think you're right with that first half assessment. Probably won't come in until after the first half ends as that one's thrown away by Edwardi. 
As quick at substitution here as Ryan McGrath back into the game. And now 5.18 to go in this first half. St. Rose will have the ball. Ebling back into the game for the Purple Roses. Panzini will go to the bench for the first time today as they bring in Avery Lynch. Kick out. Roman, and he traveled. Surprised he didn't take that shot. He was wide open, it looked like. But he had the paint, so I, I agree with the, the stance where you want to attack, try to keep drawing fouls, because right now, it just looks like Wildwood Catholic only with two team fouls across two quarters. Dunner getting across with Daniel. Now over on the wing with Ruiz. Now kick out, Dunner, a three from the corner, too strong, long rebound, taken by Lynch. Avery Lynch is a freshman, man, and such great length. I mean, he, he's gonna be pretty tall up there come senior year. And he already has that ability out on the wing. Now double team coming on, tries to pass to Roman, stolen away by Daniel. And a foul in transition on Lynch, that's his first. Right now, Wildwood's defense relying really solely on that three-point ball. Let's try to see if you get some better high-quality looks. Some teams like to live and die by the three. You know, there's always the great say saying, three's better than two, but you have to be able to make those shots. Jackson trying to go baseline, defense coming, and a charge as a big play on the defensive end as Avery Lynch stepped in there and took it. Young fellow willing to put the body on the line. And then right on cue, I, I mean, Tayshawn Jackson attacks the paint and was looking for that high percentage look, but the charge takes the opportunity right away from him. Eblin gives it up with Jaden Hodge. Lynch on the left wing. And now Eblin a three off a of screen. Cash knocks it down. Money. I mean, Eblin can hit the threes with the best of play tough defense run the floor, what else do you want? And now it's gonna be McGrath. Kicks out here with Jackson. Now Daniels stripped away by Jane Hodge. Fast break, let's see what he can do. And he is fouled by Daniel. Good play by Daniel to prevent the easy basket. Uh, you know, the crowd hates it, coach loves it. You uh, know. That's a good play though. You don't want Hodge. See, he could have just gave him momentum there, get the crowd hype, get the team hype. But you can tell Hodge looks a little annoyed that he wasn't able to take flight on that one due to the foul. Personally, I was hoping to see the young fella soar. Hodge knocks down the first, second at the line right here. No good, and that plays dividends here, the foul by Daniel. And Lynch tries to get the offensive rebound, does, and he gets fouled. And that one's going to go against Daniel again. That's his second foul on only a couple of... In two seconds. Two seconds. You definitely want him on the floor being one of your better defenders. Already with three steals in the first quarter and a half. Romano. Got to watch with that arm. Rotate the camera, now Hodge in the corner. Off the screen, Lynch, pump fakes. Now with Cameron, inside, contact, no good. Cameron with the follow up, and he puts it in. It's a great effort uh, coming from the sophomore, Tyler Cameron. Even though he misses it, stays with it. That's just good hustle for sure, and that is an unforced turnover. As Dunner just throws it away, was looking for Daniel down the floor, and just sailed it, and now Rose, and it did seem like a span of time, now up 14 points. And I'll tell you, uh, Charlie Dunner has to be the last person that makes those kind of mistakes. I, I mean, your leading scorer, top player on this team, he's got to start attacking more. He's got to get a little more involved. He's got to start unlocking some things for this offense. And I think right now St. Rhodes kind of figured it out in the second quarter after... A tough first quarter by Wildwood Catholic. Risen up, Romano with a big three. Hodge starting to able to you know, work within this offense. And without Matt Hodge throughout the most part of this game, 
Yeah, it has been a trouble. Well, you know what? So many times when you have a player that good, the team just tends to rely on him just a little bit too much in big moments. We kind of saw that happen when they played against the number one team in the country, especially later in the game. You know, taking him off the court, it forces everybody to up their game, be more involved, make a move. Don't just stand there and wait for someone else. Go take it. Now we're, we're losing. We don't have this big piece, whether we're not making him available or, or, or whatever. We're forcing you to get more involved in the action so that when he's back out there, you aren't caught window watch. Not that they've been doing that too much. It takes a, an entire team to become the number one ranked team in the state. This is quality players. However, you can see that Brian Lynch is demanding more out of his younger players. Shane Rose going to work. Quick fake pass inside. Off balance shot from Lynch, no good. And rebounded inside by Ruiz. Jackson caught underneath. Nice kick out. Dunner. Just slow it down. I think this is where Wildwood Catholic got into their element when they slowed down these possessions and didn't force anything. Daniel, top of the key. Dunner on the motion offense. Pulls from downtown and a big make from Dunner from the top of the key. And Dunner, almost like he responds to, to criticism. Every time you hear the student section get loud, Dunner comes up with a big response. Ebling trying to go baseline, walled off and a foul on Dunner, and a big shot by Ebling went right off the bleachers. That's why we're these close quarters here at St. Rose gets a little, little dangerous. Yeah, but Ebling's a warrior, he's not even phased by it. Personally me, I'm getting an ice pack and I might be hitting the shower. That was a lot of contact. Fifth team foul against the Crusaders, now two shots for Ebling at the line. First shot, good. St. Rose shooting perfect 100% from the free throw line over the course of the first quarter and a half as Panzini gonna enter the game for Evan Romano. The second to last thing that you wanted to see enter the game. If and and that, that was the moment where you really had to take control of this game if you were Wildwood Catholic with Panzini off the floor. You really had to put up your best foot forward and right there the two is able to get uh, you know, some length here. Dunner, guarded by Ebling. With Daniels, now. Double team was coming, but able to get it off. Dunner, guarded by Ebling on an island. Goes right, trying to go baseline. And he's walled off again, good defense from Ebling. Daniel, loses it and gets it back. Ruiz, trying to find an opening now, kick out, Dunner pump fakes, tries to find something, floater off the glass, no good, Daniel cleaning up inside. Great cleanup, I was gonna say, Tayshawn Jackson looked a little open, I saw Panzini lurking, but Dunner decided to attack. Doesn't make it, but Daniel coming away with it. Cameron now, right now St. Rose, just trying to move the ball to get one open. Ebling a three. Air balls, a rare air ball from Ebling. And a rebounded by Ruiz. And I think right now Wildwood Catholic knows the pace of play they want to play at. As Dunner gets it across half court. Jackson now over with Bean in the corner. Back up with Jackson. Dunner a three. No good. Off the front iron. Gonna roll out of bounds with 45.3 seconds. On the game clock here. Yeah, Dunner just rushing that when you see him leaning a little bit, didn't really establish himself as he's kind of ends up fading and it messes up the trajectory on the off balance shot. Cameron Hammond off with Jaden Hodge. Trying to cut through the center of the defense. Foul and tried to get that and one, but just couldn't get the angle he wanted. Now two shots on the way for Jaden Hodge. And listen, Jaden only a sophomore. I mean, he's going to be hitting the weight room more. He, he's going to be uh, bulking up a bit. I, I promise you, he has the skill for it. By senior year, he finishes that. Number 30 recruit in the entire 
country. Four star, already the number one in the class of 2026. And Coach Lynn says he's extremely creative, can do it all, big time finisher, big time developer, defend, uh, defender. And he's just doing it all. Has offers from St. Bonaventure, Temple, Seton Hall, Old Dominion. As he misses the second shot, and Panzini underneath with the offensive rebound and the putback. Well, and I promise you didn't misspoke because he's a big time developer too, because he has been growing here at St. Rose, and he's going to blossom uh, maybe even next year. As Cameron was able to get that one out of bounds. And right now the press coming from St. Rose, and I think that's what you gotta do if you're Brian Lynch, show the pressure in the backcourt for some turnovers. And now it'll be taken by Ruiz on the inbound. Finding a baseline pass, looking inside to Edwardi. Now back outside to Kylie Ruiz. Dunner trying to drive, step back, midi. Too short, and another rebound inside by Lynch as he'll throw it up before the horn, no good. And that'll do it for the first half, 32-19. Purple Roses at the end of 16 minutes of play. And Maz, not the first half we really expected, but St. Rose starting to get into a rhythm towards the end of that second quarter. No, for sure. Uh, I'll tell you, they started pouring it on a little bit. 32-19 game. I, I'm wondering uh, how Will Wareham is going to respond now. Uh, I mean, things got a little easier the second you saw that Matt Hodge was on. I wonder if him and Lynch had a gentleman's agreement to keep him out. Joking, of course. Uh, but... Nonetheless, you know, there is a path to Wildwood Catholic still being in this one. The Crusaders could quite literally storm back and crusade their way into, you know, making it. They've already made it really competitive. You know, if you're Brian Lynch, you know, now you crank it up to the next gear. You start getting that team to the St. Rose standard. Started off a little slow, picked it up in the second, but you still got to like what you've been seeing from the squad. Well, I think right now for Wareham and Wildwood Catholic, it's just been a slow it down game. And the times where they've been sped up and rushed, and that's when St. Rose was able to get on those runs. So I think in this second half, time's not gonna be on your side. So I wonder what Wareham's gonna do in terms of scheming. For sure, and you know, every time that it does get speed up, I mean, you look at the teams, the, the schedule that the Purple Roses have been playing all season long, that is breakneck speed with the teams that they are facing. So taking that away from them, slowing it down, However, you still have to execute in those moments. We're seeing them go to the three ball, which is fine. I, I, I don't mind going to that, but you gotta be able to set yourself, and, and they're just rushing the shot just a little bit uh, too much. You, you gotta get those better looks, those more high efficient shots to go up. Charlie Dunner has to take over for me a little bit. He's been trying, but uh, you know, rushing a little bit, not establishing. Use those backdoor screens, use those back cuts. You don't need to be the ball handler, but I want you taking these shots. Get them back into it. He's three-point special. He's got eight minutes to the start of the second half, and we will see if we get to see Matt Hodge in this second half. Sat the entire first half, but right now a 32-19 St. Rose lead. We'll see what Brian Lynch does in the final 16 minutes here on All Abilities Live. Garden State Hoops presented by All Abilities Live. Jack Bartek alongside Anthony Capone here at St. Rose High School in Belmar, New Jersey. There. A couple of back and forth possessions early in the Hodge! Hodge! Down the landing strip and taking off. Hodge communicating with his brother down to three. Step back, three ball. Got it! At the horn. Ebling off the screen in the lane. You're oh, and the foul. Brian Ebling. A chance at an old-fashioned three-point play. Who's taken away by Ebling, running the break, lobbing it up to Hodge, oh. who finishes. That's unbelievable. I mean, Hodge off the screen in the lane, bumped, count it, and the foul. And man, the Purple Roses flex their muscles, and the student section loves it.
Lead is down to 15, and Hodge has the answer using the size. You know, rebound, you saw the hustle plays. He does great, you know, doing the little things right. Beautiful feed from Romano and an easy two for Ebling. Beautiful handle. Ebling to really take that step up next season. Inside, Hodge putting it in. Fight for the board. Romano, the offensive rebound, and he puts it home. Roman. Seeing his first time tonight. Jaden Hodge reverse. Are you serious? Now the 740 to play. Hodge reverse lay in and the foul. Jaden Hodge showing off the layup package. He is ridiculous. Jaden spinning, bumping, laying left hand. Oh. My goodness. That was a little dream shake. Pump fake in the air, gets the defender jump that goes right underneath. Double with his performance tonight. Panzini wide open, that's shooting practice. Ball game. St. Rose has cleared the bench, but Panzini stays on and he slams it home. Here in Belmar, 73 to 46, your final. The Purple Rose student section loves it. A romping for St. Rose.
Second half bat again underway here from Belmar, New Jersey. St. Rose leading Wildwood Catholic 32 to 19 in the quarterfinals of the NJSIAA non-public B South New Jersey tournament. Boom. We need a new acronym, that's <laughs> for sure. Uh, but hey, great basketball down here in Belmar. We still got a whole nother half of action, whole nother 16 minutes of basketball. Dunner inbounds with Jackson and we're underway. Back up top with Jackson. And now Saint, you said, oh, it's the first half. Wildwood Catholic is not afraid to draw out these possessions as tipped out of bounds by Ebling. They were able to call it Pat Bean in the corner. Maz, what'd you like from St. Rose in that first half? Well, I'll tell you, the way that they responded, you know, it started off just a little bit slow and then started clicking. And then Panzini, Jaden Hodge coming alive, Ebling pushing the pace a little bit. But how about Avery Lynch? I mean, showing off the depth, showing off that they could go to multiple pieces. It's not just one man. And Daniel fouled there inside by Avery Lynch. The first team foul against the Purple Roses in this third quarter. Wildwood well, Catholic win back on the baseline. Daniel will get it here. Bean rotates back up top, pump fakes, stops, bounce pass out, Dunner, three from the corner, bang! Huge three from Dunner to cut it back to a 10 point game. That's what I'm talking about, he doesn't need to be the ball handler. He receives that pass to the corner, makes the most of it, now Ebling attacking. Ebling able to get to the line, a foul there on Dunner. And right now, a huge three from Dunner on the answer to start this second half off, and now Ebling to the line to shoot two. And Ebling, a nice job uh, of just pushing the pace. And you got to give it to him. But I want to go back to that Dunner shot. That's exactly what they need as Ebling missing the first one. But, but Dunner needs to be the guy. And, and you see when he has the ball, there's focus on him. Get him off, you know, let him shoot as he's been. But give him that chance to score up the shoulders, get that full forearm extension, and take his time. One of two from the line for Ebling. Lead back up to 11 for the Purple Roses. Daniel now gets it over with Bean. Bounce pass inside, Daniel gonna go to work on the low block, kicks outside, ball tipped out of bounds. That's last touch by Jaden Hodge. He'll stay with the Crusaders. And that was an interesting decision there. You saw the big man spin into the post, uh, of course, Alex Daniel, and then looking for a cutter in Ruiz. And Ebling steals that Jackson pass, coast to coast, and he's fouled by Dunner on his way up, and Dunner picking up his second foul. That's a guy you can't afford to go to the bench. And I thought Ebling was gonna pass it off to Panzini, but he got some balance in his step. You see him, he almost looks like he climbs the stairs every time he goes into the air. Little box squad action, you know. I would love to see Epling get one of those room grazers. Coach Lynch says he's one of the most underrated players in all of New Jersey as he knocks down the first. And I believe him. You saw him in that game against Montford. He was not afraid of some of those big guys. Queen, flag, it didn't matter. He was attacking. Epling misses the second shot. Everybody yeah. needs a Pat Bev player on their team. That's Epling. I don't even, I wouldn't even say Pat Bev is his closest comparison. He's, he's got a shot, he has an offensive game to him. You saying Pat Bev ain't got a shot? Absolutely not, <laughs> that one's no good. <laughs> From Ruiz, disrespectful. Cameron, moving it, Panzini a three, no good. And Dunner can't grab that rebound. Giving another chance here for the Purple Roses. Lynch, Panzini lost it. And a big turnover there and a mental error for the Purple Roses. 12 point game with 6.21 left in the third. Panzini has one of my favorite shots at the high school level. It's a great, ex uh, a great extension. He hits that apex point. He just messed up his timing just a little bit as it's still camo night here and these fans are still raving. Ruiz back up with Daniel. Donner comes back to the ball and now you're seeing the slowed down element. Can't take too much time though. Only 11 minutes of game time remaining. Bean, back up with Ruiz. 
Trying to drive inside, and he's fouled. Avery Lynch out of position there. And now the second team foul against the Purple Roses. It'll be Dunner to inbound here on the baseline. And a timeout taken by Wildwood Catholic with 5.47 to go in the third quarter. And I think right now the, this game is still sort of the same mode as we saw in that first half. Just I feel right now Wildwood Catholic needs to capitalize on those opportunities they're getting. Yeah, I mean, it's a 12-point game. You know, they, they have to be looking for ways that they can finish and get these points to go. Uh, I, I don't think I want to see Dunner controlling the ball. Not that he can't. It's just he's more dangerous being off the ball right now. Get Remember how we talked about taking away the, the best player and making everybody else get more involved? That's what you need to do. I'm saying, Dunner, you're not bringing this ball up. Everybody else, get your motion going. Get... Charlie, get to the spots that you like, and we're gonna die. We're gonna drive in. We're gonna try to make something happen. And if not, we're gonna go right to you. And, and I want you to take your time with the shot and nail it like you've been doing all season long. Runner will inbound on the baseline. We'll get it in with Ruiz. Back to Runner. And you saw that off-ball motion that you wanted. As what? Oh, Romano so tries to keep it in, deal. and Roman gets a tip out of his hands. Last touch by Daniel. What a Deal. Evan Romano. Wow. And now it's going to be Jaden Hodge take this one up. Ebling off the off ball screen from Evan Roman. And now back up top. Three from Ebling is good. And Ebling with a big shot go up by 15. Ball on the ground. Who has it? Bean lost it, and now Luke Roman able to get the jump ball, a possession arrow favoring the Purple Roses. And how about the senior, Luke Roman? I mean, back-to-back -back hustle plays, gaining the possession for the Purple Roses. It's just winning basketball, and that's a nice job. As Hodge with the ball now. It'll be Romano, now back to Roman. And back off. And now out in the corner, a three, no good from Romano. And Jaden Hodge, offensive rebound. Panzini, extra pass to Ebling, back in the corner. Hodge, wow, that's too strong. Rebounded inside by Roman and then turned it over right to Ruiz. Transition, Ruiz blocked. And a put back there from Dunner as a huge offensive rebound for the senior. Ebling, going to go quick. Euro step, no good, and now you're giving the ball right back to the Crusaders. Bean. Trying to rotate back up, handoff Jackson. Over with Kaili Ruiz, and now back up top with the other Ruiz, Nasir. Dunner, going to work, inside, off the glass, and right now, Charlie Dunner is taking over. It's what you need from your best player. Charlie Dunner, nice crossover, kisses that one off the glass, and he does that on one of the best perimeter defenders in Ebling. Four minutes to go in this third quarter. Lead down to 11. Hodge. Cross-court pass, Panzini wide open, and it looked like he was a little late on that release to go short. Now Kylie Ruiz in transition, kick out. Jackson lets a three fly, too long. And rebounded by Ruiz. Dunner a three. No good. And two misses right there for the Crusaders. And a timeout taken by Brian Lynch here with 3.32 remaining in the third. And I'll tell you, it, it is absolutely electric in this gym right now. Of course, because of this game, as we're looking at an 11-point battle. But also, I just got word that uh, the girls team will have a home game as Rainey comes away with the upset against Wildwood Catholic in the girls bracket here. And so that means there will be another home game here in the state tournament down here in Belmar. And if you know, St. Rose boys team holds on, we'll have another doubleheader potentially here. We don't know if we'll have confirmation that we will be broadcasting that, but I hope we are. You know, right up. Well, I have to assume if we are not, it has nothing to do with the great people down here at St. Rose. There's some Absolutely. other factors at play that, uh, you know. SIA, everything that goes into that, but Got a, right now. There's red tape, all the red tape. But right now, still a 
11 point St. Rose lead here with a couple minutes left to go in this third quarter, Baz. And it's been a slowed down game. Not many possessions in this one. But right now, St. Rose been efficient here in this third quarter and they're trying to see if they can close this one out. I, I like the passing that we're seeing. It's almost like a, uh, a, uh, a pinball just hitting off the bumper, boom, boom, boom. It's a really fast pass to get into those open shots. Just got to do a little better uh, of finishing those three balls, especially uh, getting the apex release point going. When you, when you release on the way down, that's going to mess up timing too. Roman hands it off with Hodge. Trying to go right. Good defense there from Ruiz. Got him moving to the right. Hodge to the rim, and there it is with the left-handed finish. Dude, he is just silky smooth. I mean, just getting the defender off balance. Great attacking of the rim and a quality finish. Tab set, Ruiz gets it off. A three ball flies and an air ball from the outside as Kaili Ruiz just wasn't comfortable there. And those are the possessions right now. If your head coach will wear them, you need to be able to be efficient because you're not gonna get too many chances with the ball. Evelyn, the Panzini. Now Hodge back up top, Romano pump fakes, tries to go inside, kick out, Ebling lets one fly, too short. That's McGrath with the rebound. Ruiz in transition. Tries to go baseline, and defense inside, and a charge taken by Jaden Hodge, standing tall. Jaden Hodge is a better man than me. The willingness to stand in there and take that kind of a contact as he thuds off the ground, but he jumps right back up. And that's what happens when you got your head down a little bit, defender coming in with that head down, you can set up and boom, no restricted zone either. Panzini handing off with Romano. Good defense there from Kaili Ruiz. A foul up top on Ruiz. Got him on the reach in. And how about how about Evan Romano? I mean, just energy boosting right now. He could kind of do it all. And a great piece coming off the bench here for the Roses. Romano traveled as he got the pass from Hodge and just couldn't put it on the ground right away. And he'll give it right back to the Crusaders as Anthony Edwardi out of the game and it'll be Pat Bean back in. So Ant, you know, we talked about whether or not we see Hodge in the second half. Over or under, we see him in this fourth quarter. If it gets close, you might be seeing him. He's a competitive guy. See him come stand up a couple of times. He's been itching to get into this. As a foul on Luke Roman, as Ruiz was able to slip right by him. And now two shots coming for Kylie Ruiz. Chance to cut this back down to 11 points. And no matter how far it gets, it just seems like St. Rose has had this comfortable lead. And it's really tough for this, this Wildwood Catholic team. It's, you can't really get out to those runs that you want to just because St. Rose has control of possession for most of the game. Second shot, good. As Student section has no uh, effect on that trip. Cameron back up top with Jaden Hodge. And they got a back door and a two-handed slam from Panzini. Two defenders on him too. He took contact and was able to lift off. So strong, nice length. Ruiz inside, couldn't hit the crafty layup. Hodge. Has numbers and slowed down, but now I see Ruiz with a big play to get the steal and tipped out of bounds off of Luke Roman. 126 here in the third quarter. The Crusaders just got to find some points. It's, they, we've been hovering around a 13 to an 11 point game. If they get past that threshold, we got a serious competition on our hands. And it starts with this guy, Dunner. Back up top. Back to Edwardi in the wing. 
Trying to go right at the basket, turned around, fall away jumper. No good right now, and they're just forcing shots. Somebody's gotta find points other than Dunner though. I'm all for getting him the ball, but still. Hodge, a give and go, working with Romano. Hodge just walking right into that one. It's all about staying active, being in sync. And now Dunner. Gets it now off with Kylie Ruiz. Out in the corner, Dunner, jab step, gets the screen. Jumper from 20 feet out, no good. Romano will get it back up top with Jaden Hodge and a cross court pass to Cameron. Now Panzini in the corner. Look at this good passing. passing from St. Rose. Oh Hodge my. wide open. Off the bank, no good. But Cameron offensive rebound. Back up with it, strong at the rim. And the lead now up to 18 for the Purple Roses. Even three seconds on the clock in the third quarter. Dunner, kick out. Ruiz a three at the horn, no good. And that'll do it for the third quarter. St. Rose closing out on a big run, 6-0 in the last 40 seconds. And I'll tell you, even when they mess up, I mean, and really, kid, you're, it's not really a mess, it's just a missed three, you know? How about the pass and they even get it open in the first place? But even with the missed shot, somebody is there to clean up. This time, it's, of course, the sophomore in Cameron. And they are about to pour it on. You just feel it coming. We always talk about the pendulum of momentum. And right now, it's swinging with them. I'm expecting a full-on onslaught here in this fourth quarter. And really, Jaden Hodge hasn't had to put you know, the big boy cap on. Everybody's been starting to do it. Panzini, the big dunk there to close out that third quarter. Cameron with the putback. Ebling has been the main scorer tonight. And when he's on the floor, they're just sort of not really paying him much attention. He's been able to slip into the corner and knock down threes. Well, you know what? It, it, we know Ebling can score, not the main scorer, or no disrespect, within the top names that you think of scoring when it comes to St. Rose, but getting him this confidence, getting him these keys right now, and showing them that they trust him. Next round and further rounds on, you know, facing some stifling defense, maybe someone gets locked down, and then boom, you go right to Eblen, and there's the biggest impact that he's made on the season. Might come from the scoring outburst. We know it's with the defense, we know he's had some good passing, it's willingness to fight for every loose ball that's in his vicinity. But that's the key that unlocks the next level of Brian Ebling. And a foul off the ball going to go against Panzini. He was draped on the back of Daniel. And right now, time is not a friend of Wildwood Catholic. They have to work quick. Inbound play, trying to find something. He'll get it to Jackson. Jackson back up top with Bean. Bean loses the ball, tipped out of bounds. It should have been a kick ball, but Roman able to get out in front and lay it in. Thought that was definitely going to be a kick ball, but no whistle comes. And St. Rose takes full on advantage. And now a double team coming. As Dunner gets fouled in transition. And I think with the pace of play in the, right now for Wildwood Catholic, it's starting to look a little bit out of reach. And right now, you know, I, I, I can't even blame it. You know, Will Wareham. To ask him for an explanation. That was clearly a kick ball from what I saw. But nonetheless, the decision's been made. Yeah, it was off the leg of Luke Roman, off his knee, and just catapulted across the court. Jackson inside, tough take, no good. Ball's bounced around, rebounded by Jaden Hodge. In transition, step back, Jay, good, Romano. Just a good bucket by Romano. Jackson's got to be able to finish that. That's a nice look uh, of, you know, using uh, Dunner as a diversion. And he had prime positioning in real estate, but he's got to capitalize. Roman, another steal. Dunner pickpockets that one. Good pass inside Ruiz. A block from Luke Roman. Transition defense in full effect here for both of these teams. Hodge in the corner, kicked in. Roman's ball is tipped out to Romano. Straight away three, bounces off. And now Daniel kicks it up. Ruiz, double clutch layup, foul by Romano inside. Two shots coming. That was a nice clutch back to get that foul. As 
just uh, a little movement of the ball will win you a trip to the free throw line. First shot, good from Ruiz with 6.39 remaining, cuts the lead down to 21 points. And uh, we've seen some great crowd diversions. I don't know if one guy up singing Miley Cyrus is gonna be enough from the crowd. Could definitely be a strategy. But second shot, also good as Ruiz, unaffected. I'll tell you, the uh, student section's gonna go have to go draw up some practice for this uh, next uh, state tournament game if all things hold in this last 6.30 with a 20 point difference. Roman out, Cameron in the corner. Trying to go to work. Cross court pass, finding Romano. Panzini, now out in the corner, three, bang! It's Avery Lynch from downtown. Just cash money, how do you want it? Pass to find the open shooter, and boom. And now Jackson trying to go inside, and the foul will be on the floor. How about Lynch gonna pick up that one. How about Avery Lynch? I mean, a true freshman, standing at an impressive height, as he's literally eye to eye with Panzini. Daniel, step back. Jay from the wing. It looks like it was tipped from Panzini. Under and rebounded the, by Roman. Under the uncle's tutelage. Let's see what happens here. Oh, oh my Lynch. God. He's just finding it right now. A big three and a 5 0 run for Avery Lynch on his own. Beam keeps it in. What is Lynch going to be when he's a senior? You can only imagine the way he develops these outside wings. You got to like his chances. Backdoor cut, tipped, and stolen by Panzini. Romano, oh, no look pass, Cameron. Oh, you would have seen this place explode if that one went in. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I, I, th a freshman should not be able to make. And Ruiz, that one's gonna be on the floor, no continuation as Roman's gonna pick up the foul. A freshman should not be able to make that. That was Magic Johnson-esque on that no look pass. For a double clutch underhand shuffle. As Panzini's gonna just mop up the floor himself. Panzini quite literally does it all in the gym. I mean, what, you got a guy like that, gotta love it. And another senior gonna check in here as it looks like Brennan Sherman. We'll be checking in. The two shots at the line for Ruiz. First shot good. And now substitution coming in, it'll be Brennan Sherman into the game for Romano. McGrath in for Ruiz. As Nasir Ruiz knocks down both Cutting the lead to 23 with 5.11 left. 54 to 31, this is it if you want to keep the season alive. The burst has to come now. I, I don't even know if there's enough time to get the job done, but it's gonna have to be a, have a flurry of shots. You're gonna have to force turnovers, fast point breaks have to be the answer. I mean, this is it. If you're a senior, your, your season, your last organized season with the hometown friends, that's it. You gotta go now. And it's definitely, time is gonna oh, be a essence. factor. It's, it's not gonna be on your side in St. Rose. Matt Hodgeless today. Matt Hodgeless. And it hasn't really been a problem. Usually they are scoring at a 70 points per game clip. Now at 54 points today. So they have a chance to get to that 70 point per game clip. It's just gonna take a little bit extra from this unit. For sure, but as they're standing, sitting here with an over 20 point deficit, they are in some prime position. Absolutely here as we come coming out of this timeout. 23 point St. Rose lead. They've had most of the control here in the second half. You're watching SRTV. Albeit outside of that first little three minute run in that third quarter. And that's been Avery Lynch these last few minutes who's kind of putting his stamp on this game. Always talk about next man up mentality. Why not a freshman? I wonder if him and uh, 
Coach Lynch, around the winter breaks, you know, the Thanksgiving breaks, even the off season, you know, drawing up tactics at the dinner table. A little 2K action, use that as a learning moment. Panzini, now out in the corner, Lynch at three, air ball, that definitely didn't teach him that one. And Ruiz with the rebound. But on, it was a heat check. McGrath. Back up top. Looking at Dunner. Now off the screen, Bean has a double team draw. Rises up for a tough midi in the face of Lynch. Was giving up almost a foot there. Little fade action to open up some space. That's a great hit. That's a big time shot. Cameron, man-to-man -man defense here for the Crusaders, but they're leaving Sherman, Sherman wide open. And that one too strong. And a turnover here for Wildwood Catholic because they force this one. Jaden Hodge coming back into the game. Ebling and Romano as the starters are going to try to close out this last 401, leading by 21. Dunner gets it inside, some contact, ball's blocked away, and now it's gonna be taken by Ruiz, and now a jump ball, and I think. Oh, it looks oh. like it's gonna be a foul. I believe it was Panzini that came down, on his way down, that ended up getting the block. I thought Ebling uh, had enough of the tie up uh, with Ruiz, Nasir Ruiz, to force the jump ball, but we're gonna be sending him back to the line. Release first shot, good. Twenty point game now as Wildwood Catholics gonna try to see if they can go on a run. Second shot rattles in. Hodge trying to break the press. Gets it across with Ebling. Kick out, corner, now with Panzini, and that should have been a travel. Able to get it out to Lynch. Ebling, and now Romano, backdoor cut, Lynch with some contact, and he'll get fouled. Just great rotations, attacking from different angles. You know, might, might have gotten away with a travel, but still the passing back and forth, crisscrossing the, their half of play, and then the freshman coming down the baseline on what could have been an open look, a nice recovery to get some contact on him. Send him to the line, we know there's free throw troubles all up and down the state, really the country when it comes to it. Start shooting the Rick Berries. First one won't go there for Lynch, second one on the way, that one's good. Back to a 20 point game. Ruiz has it off. With Bean, now back up top with McGrath. Good off-ball movement here for Dunner. As he loses his dribble, able to get it back, but he has to pass it off. Bean, jab step, turns his back. Trying to get Ebling, but can't get him to move. Out to Dunner, three, knocks it down. And Dunner showcasing why he's one of the premier shooters in South Jersey. That's his fourth three of the game. A little too late though, 2.51. No shot clock? I don't know, man. Kick out, Ebling, trying to find a pass inside to Lynch. Kick out, Panzini, Ebling, corner three, no good. And Hodge gonna be called for an over the back. No, nope, that's oh. gonna be on Charlie Dunner. Oh. As Hodge definitely went over the head of Charlie Dunner, but he got in front of him on the box out. Okay. So I don't know if there was enough for the foul. I did see Hodge arches back a bit, but I thought that just might have been from the angle that he was trying to come down with that rebound. Panzini tried walking into a wide open layup, but some quick hands get it away. Stolen there by McGrath. Crusaders going quickly. Bean inside, raises up above Hodge and gets it. And Bean's been coming alive. They could have used this in the third quarter from him. So a 15 point game, Ebling checked out for probably the last time today. As that ball's tipped out of bounds as Hodge got it stripped away 
by Edwardi. Ebling a little hobbled on the bench there. A timeout taken by Brian Lynch here with 2.11 to go in the fourth. 15 point game, not impossible. Of course, being hopeful here. With no shot clock, it definitely doesn't help. No, not at all. Which is why, guess what? We should implement it. Definitely gives a, gives the team a chance what, to make it. What is what is wrong with basketball these days? I mean, no shot clock. I mean, but this has been they want to take away. It's been a rule of jersey forever, so I know. it's not like it's just today. No, I get it. I'm just saying, just the, the, the basketball culture is killing me these days. They, they, no shot clock. We take away the TOC. They're trying to bend. Court storming all across the nation now. Oh, man. What's you next? What happened in Duke this weekend? What's next? We're just taking all the great things away from the game. You can barely play defense anymore at any of the other levels. What's next? Inbound play here on the baseline. It'll be Ryan Dudas who just checked into the game. Ball movement here on the baseline. Lynch trying to find some space in the low block to create, and he's fouled, but travel before the contact. And a turnover here, forced by the Crusaders. Dunner's got to go quick. I don't think he really thinks about the time right now. I think you got to have the time in the back of your head. You got to get a shot off quick. Edwardi taking his time. Hop step goes up strong and a block by Panzini. And that effectively ices it. We'll have to start calling him the squeegee as he cleans the court whenever you need him to. Of course, I'm talking about his blocking ability. Well, how about this to clean it up? But not that one to go. Ball's on the ground, taken by Edwardi. In transition, and that one should be a travel as that pivot foot definitely came up. Minute 24 left, and it looks like they're gonna start emptying the benches here as Calvin Kiker coming in. Daniel coming in as Dunner exiting probably for the last time. Edwardi as well. You're Edwin watching as well. SRTV. The seniors departing for one last time. Emotional moment there on that sideline. Panzini inside. And a block. And that was Kiker making a play. Jackson in transition. And Bio Panzini soaring in and making a key block. The squeegee Panzini. And then he lets one go, and that one's airmailed. Rebound inside, and Lynch with the putback. I believe it was Lynch who got blocked before as well. But 57-40, that's going to be it I for think this Lynch one. has been the leading scorer today for the Purple Roses, the way he's been able to close out this one. And an impressive performance from the freshman in a must-win game. Matt Hodge not on the floor. They had to go to him a, a few more times today. I mean, Avery Lynch... Showed out today. No, uh, for sure. You saw the young fella uh, up and down as uh, he's just making an impact for sure. Uh, just always in the right place at the right time in this one. You got to love it. But I'll tell you, if you're going down, right, and it's going to be the last time, at least you can take it away saying when you're telling the stories as we all love to tell the high school stories. I went down. But I went down swinging to the number one team in the state. Yeah, and this is, a, this is a team that in their stretch has dominated many teams. So you gotta give it to this Wildwood Catholic team the way they showed up today. Especially in the state tournament. I went down swinging and we won in a consolation game against Wallington. Dudas, oh, good move in the low post. Kick out, Daniel three, airmailed. Rebound inside, Ruiz foul, count it! And Ruiz, I didn't hear no bell. And <laughs> Ruiz has been spending a lot of time at the free throw line. You see the student section one more time. We're going to attempt something here to throw him off. I don't think it's going to work. You see a guy on the shoulders of another student. As that one's good. And converts the and one. I'll tell you, he might live on jury way because the Muffin Man did not affect him on that one. Duda's pressure coming to steal. Ruiz. It looked like there was some contact there. Offensive rebound by Jackson and a foul underneath. And two shots coming for Jackson. A 
And now two shots for the junior, Tayshawn Jackson. And they're fighting to the very end, this Wildwood Catholic team. Tough season overall. And a record under 500 coming into this tournament. But a game like this definitely breathes some new energy into your program for next season. No, for sure, you know. Head, hold your head high. You came out, you battled. As Kiker gets the offensive rebound and a quick putback. Legitimately the best the state has to offer. It was a valiant effort. Of course, Hodge wasn't on the court, but you still had some really good players, including the younger Hodge, who's a, a top player in the nation. Panzini, a, a top player in the state, you know? There's something to definitely be proud of this effort, but it will be St. Rose who on Thursday will have a home game as they will face the winner of Holy Cross Prep and Calvary Christian out of Old Bridge as that game should have finished up. As Kiker throws that one away, 5.9 left on the clock. St. Rose with an 11 point lead. And I think they're just content with dribbling out this clock. As Ryan Dudas will get it up. And the final dribbles here as Orion Campbell closes this one out. St. Rose winners here in the quarterfinals today, a 57-46 final over the Crusaders. And no Matt Hodge, no problem. No Matt Hodge, no problem. But as we said, you do not become the number one team in the state strictly because of one player. I mean, you look all around. There's Dylan Harpers. There's Peyton Seals. Look, there's Jaron Barnett's, whatever you want. There's all these teams with great, amazing talent. But it takes an entire unit to become the number one team in the state. It's more than Matt Hodge. Don't get me wrong. He's a gigantic, probably the biggest, and I mean that figuratively and literally because he's six foot eight, the biggest piece of this team. But they showed that they are a team. Guys have stepped up and they got this win. And now you go into the next phase of the tournament and you expect more out of the guys who've been here all season long. Avery Lynch was a guy like that today who came up big in, in certain spots and provided some much needed scoring boost. And without his you know, contribution. We got a surprise for you as I believe I heard through the grapevine that uh, Panzini and of course Lynch are gonna wanna talk to us. Absolutely, we're gonna have that here on All Abilities Live. All these students are gonna be going to Federico's after this one, a nice big win for the Purple Roses, 57-46 here on Garden State Hoops, presented by All Abilities Live, Anthony Phone, alongside Brandon Masmorazzo. You're not gonna wanna miss our post-game interviews here with Coach Lynch and Romano here on, the, on, the, on our airwaves here. So you don't wanna miss that, we'll be right back. 